dear students welcome to your english class i hope that you all are in the best of your health this is the textbook flamingo english core for class 12 dear students today i would like to draw your attention towards the life and education of slum children the children of the so called different world metaphorically far far away from the world of actual childhood this is poem 2 an elementary school classroom in a slum written by stephen spender stephen spender born on 28th of february 1909 in kensington london was an english poet novelist and essayist whose work concentrated on themes of social injustice and class struggle he left university college oxford without taking a degree and went to berlin in 1930 Spender took a keen interest in politics and declared himself to be a socialist and pacifist. His famous books include Poems of Dedication, The Edge of Being, The Creative Element, The Struggle of the Modern, and an autobiography, World Within World. He was appointed Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the United States Library of Congress in 1965. He died on 16 July 1995 at the age of 86 in England. Dear students now coming to the introductory part of an elementary school classroom in a slum the poem an elementary school classroom in a slum penned down by stephen spender describes the social inequalities which are prevailing in the society he exposes the glaring gaps and marginalization that occurs even so often in our societies in the poem he describes the condition of the students of an elementary school which is situated in a slum area The poet compares the conditions of the haves that is the privileged children and the have nots that is the underprivileged children of the slum. The poet wants to draw attention of every one towards these kids so that their life can be improved and they may get trained to become good citizens rather than criminals. The poet describes the children who study in an elementary school which is set up in a slum area. far far repetition lays stress on the distance that is very far away from the rush of strong wind that is full of energy vigor activeness and flow the poet says that the faces of children are dull and without any energy these children are compared to unwanted weeds here the writer wants to say that these children seem to be unwanted like the unwanted weeds which grow on their own in the fields in the line like rootless weeds the poet uses simile and shows that these are unwanted children and their uncombed and unkempt hair look like rootless wild plants their faces are tousled and dirty their hair is scattered untidily around their pale faces then he gives us a vivid picture of the classroom he describes a tall girl who seems to be burdened by poverty her head is bent maybe because of tiredness or shame There is a boy who is so weak and thin that he has been compared to a sheet of paper. The paper seeming boy is a metaphor for lean and thin boy and rat's eyes is an another metaphor to indicate the expression of his eyes as being bulged out and greedy just like a rat. The poet says that this boy with rat's eyes and stunted growth is unlucky because he inherited naughty diseases from his father due to which he has a deformed body. He is the inheritor of twisted bones. Instead of getting any facility from his father he has received a disease in heritage he is reciting a lesson of enumerating the diseases inherited from his father at the back of the class in dim area a small boy is sitting the unnoted is an antithesis or opposite between this sweet boy and the boy with rat's eyes he seems to be hopeful as he can dream dreams seem to be alive in his eyes his eyes have that spark of dreams to be the part of that world outside the classroom he dreams of squirrels playing games in the hollow of the tree his dreams are of the places other than this repulsive classroom he is lost in his imagination creating his own fantasy world where he plays like a squirrel in its tree room he is not interested in the monotonous environment of the classroom an antithesis has been drawn between the openness of the tree room and the dim closed classroom The poet depicts the critical condition of the pale and dingy yellow walls of the classroom. He compares the color of the walls to sour cream. The classroom has a picture of Shakespeare, uh, which was probably donated 
uh, to them they are of these pictures are of no use shakespeare and literature have no place in their lives shakespeare's bald head looks like the rising sun at the horizon education is said to be similar to the rising sun as it spreads light everywhere shakespeare is considered to be the symbol of culture education and intelligence all over the world but it is all meaningless for these children there is also a picture of high rising domes in a clear sky hung on the classroom walls which depicts dawn of the civilized world there is a picture of the beautiful tyrolese valley a valley in tyrol austria which indicates beauty and hope with its bells and colorful flowers representing the world that celebrates civilization progress and heavenly splendor there is also a world map hung on the wall which is of no use to them as their world is narrow and stuck in the boundaries of poverty and misery this map depicts the world of the rich and powerful it is the map of the dictators or the oppressors who have drawn it as per their will it quite ironical it is quite ironical that it has been donated to the slum children who are the members of a different world but for these children the map of the world is irrelevant because the slum where they live is different from what is shown in the map their world is only what they see out of the windows of the classroom the slum where their future is full of uncertainty and darkness these windows not the map of the rich is real for them the future of these children is compared to a narrow street which means that there is no scope available for their future growth the future of these children is uncertain bleak and full of despondency and despair they are far away from rivers seas that resemble adventure excitement and beauty as well as from the stars of words that symbolize wisdom and the radiance of knowledge that can brighten their future narrow street is a metaphor for their future which is limited sealed with a lead sky is again a metaphor it indicates sealed with a poisonous bluish gray sky with no escape these pictures on the wall have no meaning for these children because their world is entirely different from what the pictures show these pictures depict education knowledge energy beauty acceptance and travel comprehending these pictures is beyond their abilities the poet feels that shakespeare is wicked as he is misleading these naive children through his words portraying the words of worlds portraying the world of ships sun and love which is not only unreal for them but it has a negative impact on their minds he feels that this world instigates them to steal or take unfair means as they desperately make attempts to escape from their cramped holes shakespeare is an evil man for them as these children have faced so many hardships that they consider every other person to be their enemy he is absolutely meaningless for them they don't find the map to be a good thing they are never liked or loved by anyone therefore they hate almost everyone ships represent power majestic approach sun shows warmth and energy their desire of power energy beauty and of being loved and accepted by others forces them to steal cramped holes is a metaphor to indicate their small hutments they live in small cramped holes like rodents and they have started adjusting to it from fog here is an alliteration that has been used while fog is a metaphor used for day and endless night is a metaphor to indicate a never ending torture their life starts with uncertainty and is going towards an endless night of uncertainty mingled with torture this means that their future is full of darkness in other words their birth life and death are all enveloped by darkness on the heaps of refuse and garbage one can easily see these children these kids are so thin that one can easily see their bones through the thin layer of skin these kids suffer from malnutrition and are underdeveloped like bottle bits on stone is a simile to describe the lenses of their spectacles they wear spectacles which are made of stree steel they are cheap and very uncomfortable even the lenses in the spectacles are repaired the lenses look like pieces of broken bottle glass pieces joined together similarly their dreams have also been broken by the harsh realities of their life all of their time and space are foggy slums is a metaphor to show that their life is dirty 
dark and without hope the poet notices the creation of two different worlds the dirty slums with their narrow lanes and cramped houses which are virtual hells and then there are islands of prosperity and beauty which the rich and powerful dwell the poet protests against the disparity between the lives of the people in these two worlds he wants that the poor should enjoy social equality and justice the poet shows his indignation by suggesting that the map on the classroom wall should show the reality of their life it must show the huge slums instead of beautiful scenic graphics as a mark of protest he says that the fair map or the civilized map of the world should have blots of slums as big as doom the gap must be reduced between the two worlds the poet says that governor inspector and visitors are important and powerful persons he invokes them to help the miserable slum children they are expected to perform an important role in removing social injustice and class inequalities they can bridge the gap between the two worlds the beautiful world of the great and rich and the ugly world of slums he urges them to change the life of these kids and make the world map a reality for them this map means the world of rich and the and he urges the authorities to make this world possible for the poor slum children these windows of dirty surroundings have cramped their lives stunted their physical growth and mental development and shut their lives in underground graves with no escape so abridging the gap between the two worlds can solve the problem break or break repetition shows that all the barriers must be broken till these children come out of the dirty surroundings of slums of the town and run towards the green fields and breathe in open air there is an urgent need to break the restrictions which are put on them due to poverty and lack of resources he wants the governor and public to help these kids in achieving their dream dreams as this will take them away from fog to azure sky azure is a deep blue sky used in antithesis to the foggy lead sky they are trapped in the poet hopes that the bureaucrats and authorities understand their moral responsibilities and free these deprived ones from traps of their graves he wants all the barriers that keep them away from achieving the true education to be broken down they should be given an opportunity to come out of their narrow and shabby lanes and extend to the blue sky and waves rising over the golden sands the children must be given the freedom to experience the wholesome bounties of nature's fields they will then go through the white and green leaves here white leaves depict books and green leaves depict nature this will then result in their progress and they will be able to paint a bright future for themselves the powerful last line history is theirs whose language is the sun is a metaphor that contains a vital truth this world does not listen to the dumb and driven people only those who speak with confidence power authority and vision are heard and obeyed those who create history are people whose ideas and language can motivate move inspire and influence millions of people in order to be effective their language must have the warmth and power of the sun